So I get a lot of questions about flexible neon tubing, and up until this point I really haven't had much experience with them, and no experience at all with what I would consider to be the string your own strip type. But the time has come to take a closer look at this type of product to see if it really is a game changer or if I'll be sticking to my normal straight line diffuser channels. To get things started, let's take a closer look at the accessories. It comes with two different types of end caps, one with the hole to feed the wires out if needed, and one that doesn't have the opening. Next, you have your drywall anchors and screws that can be used to secure the aluminum clip in place where the tubing can clamp in. And finally, I have 5 meters of the silicone diffuser material. So if you've never seen something like this before, the bottom part where the string is coming out is where you'll insert the LED strip, and right here is where the light will shine through. The first thing I want to cover is what to do if you want to cut them down to size. I found for this that a simple utility knife worked best, and if you do lose the string in the process, it is pretty easy to fish it out using a small pliers, but I will go over a different way you can go about getting the LEDs inserted that does not require the string later on in the video. Now for getting the LED strip inserted, I found that 2 feet was about the max I could do with just pushing it through on one end. This worked for both the 60 and 100 LED per meter strip that I tried. So before going over the string method, I did want to touch on a different approach that you could use to install the strip. I noticed that the bottom of the silicone tubing was pretty thick and rigid, and I wondered what would happen if I simply cut an incision right down the middle, being careful not to go too deep, and then just insert the LEDs from underneath. And sure enough, when you split it open, it would go back and hold its shape when you let go. It does take a little bit of patience, but it's not that difficult to get the strip into place using this method, and could easily be done for the entire 5 meters. Next, let's go over the traditional string application. I'm going to wrap things behind the first LED on the strip, and then I'll be tying a knot on the bottom like this. Now you want to lay everything out as straight as possible, and it does recommend that you have two people for this, but I'm going to give it a go by myself. From here, it's just pulling on the exposed string from the other side and making sure things are not catching up front. It actually went surprisingly smooth even without any help, and even though this leftover section was 3 meters long, it was still smooth sailing right at the end, so I don't think an extra 2 meters would have been that difficult if I did have the entire length. Now before moving on, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Aura. So this is me signing up for their free 14 day trial and during the setup process one of the many things they do is scan the internet for data brokers that have your personal information. These data brokers then make a fortune selling your information to spammers, scammers, and other entities that want to know more about you. Now Aura was able to find 30 such instances of my personal information being in the hands of these companies. Then with one click, Aura sends out a notice to have my information removed from their systems, which they are legally required to do when asked. Now this just scratches the surface of what they're able to do as they are the number one rated one-stop solution to keep you and your family safe from cyber criminals. Their all-in-one platform offers antivirus protection, credit monitoring, credit lock, financial transaction alerts, secure VPN, identity protection, parental controls, 24-7 US-based customer service, and much, much more. They have an a rating with the Better Business Bureau and have been featured on Wall Street Journal, Bloomberg, Forbes, Money, and Security.org to name a few. I'll leave a link in the description for you to start your own free 14-day trial, so please make sure to check them out. Thank you all so much, and now back to the video. So to get these set up, I'm going to be using the metal brackets it comes with, but if you're like me and don't want to fully commit to a design by screwing these into your wall, or maybe you're renting and it's not allowed, I'd recommend just using some 3M removable wall strips like you're seeing here. Now I kind of have a rolling hills type design in mind, so I'm going to first place these brackets with the 3M tape on the wall where I envision things will look good after the neon tubing is installed. Once I have the first set secured, I'm going to be measuring down 6 inches and doing the exact same thing. Once those are in, I'll be measuring down another 6 inches and repeating. Now one thing I did want to mention is that I really would only use these if you wanted some type of curve or bend in your design. If all you're going for is a straight line, then I would just use the regular aluminum diffuser channels. So now I'm going to take the one neon tube that I completed earlier in the video using the string method and install it into the top brackets. Now for reference, this section is about 3 meters long and I'm using some SK6812 strips that have 60 LEDs per meter. I then made a couple more identical sections of neon tubing and lights to complete the design. And as a reminder, I'll leave links in the description to everything that I'm using in this video, so make sure to check those out if you're interested. So as far as the actual wiring setup, what you're looking at is the beginning of all three sections. I've soldered my own 18 gauge silicone wires to the strips, and I did make a soldering for beginners video that you can watch if you're curious on how that's done since it is one of the things I cover. Now I did use all white wires, so to make it easier for me to get things connected down the road, I marked the voltage wire with red, ground with black, and I left the data line blank. 
You can use any color wire that you want, but depending on what you want to do to hide everything, at least for me, white wires are going to blend in better with my walls, so that's what I'm using. Next is the ESP32 board, which already has WLED installed. I'll leave a link in the description to the video I already made walking you through those easy steps if it's something you have questions on. I'll also be using some 20 gauge jumper wires that have one male and one female end to get things connected. And again, color doesn't matter, but I'll try to keep things consistent so it's easier to follow along. I'm going to take my red jumper wire and plug it into the VIN pin on the module. Next, I'll take the white one and insert it into the GND pin right next to it. I'm going to do things a little bit differently from my normal setups in terms of the data lines. You certainly don't have to do it this way, but I'm going to plug one green jumper wire into the D2 pin, another one into the D4 pin, and a third into the D5 pin. Now the amount of LEDs that I have total for this build, which is a little under 600, would run just fine on one pin, but I wanted to try something different this time, so that's why I'm doing it this way. And to connect all the wires we're dealing with together, I'll use a couple 5 slot Wego pieces and 3 2 slot pieces. For power, I'll be using this BTF lighting 5 volt 20 amp unit. The three wires on the left, black for live, white for neutral, and green for ground, go to my wall outlet. The white wire in the middle is connected to one of the negative posts, and the red wire on the right is connected to a positive terminal. Go ahead and connect your two 5 slot Wego pieces to these two wires. Now all you have to do is take each LED strip and find the one voltage wire that we marked red and plug it into the positive Wego connector and then take the ground cable that we marked black and plug it into the negative Wego piece and then do this for the other two LED strips. We should now have three white unmarked wires left coming from the three LED strips which are our data lines. Use a two slot connector and put one on each of those three wires. Next, take the ESP32 device and connect the three green male ends of the jumper wires connected to the board to the three Wego pieces that are connected to the data of the LED strips. And finally, take the red VIN jumper wire from the ESP and hook it up to the last remaining slot of the Wego connector from the positive terminal on the power supply, and then do the same with the white GND jumper wire from the ESP to the last open slot on the Wego piece connected to the negative post on the power unit. Now before plugging things in, a lot of these types of power supplies have a switch somewhere to toggle between 110 and 220 volts. And if you're located in the US, make sure it's set to 110 since that's what the vast majority of home outlets are wired to. So now that we have everything plugged in, I'm going to open up the WLED app. I've already scanned for available devices by hitting the plus icon near the top right, and the bottom one that says WLED is the controller that we just set up, so go ahead and click to open. Next, click on configure and then into LED preferences. I'm first going to set the brightness limiter to 7000 milliamps. Now scroll further down and under hardware setup it defaults to WS281X so I need to go in and change that to SK6812 which are the lights that I'm using. Further down under GPIO I've noticed recently it defaults to 16 when you install WLED onto the board and if you remember from before I'm using the D2, D4, and D5 data pins for this build so I'm going to first change the 16 to 2 which represents the D2 pin. Then I'm going to put the number of LEDs that are connected to the D2 output which is connected to my top diffuser channel and I've already counted to be 190 pixels. Go ahead and hit save and you'll immediately see the top channel lights turn on. Next go back into LED preferences and we're going to hit the plus icon under the LED outputs and do the exact same thing that we just did except this time we're going to set the GPIO to 4 which represents our D4 data pin. I'll hit save and then you'll see the middle lights turn on. Then finally go back and do the exact same thing for the D5 data pin which is connected to our bottom neon diffuser. And what's cool about this is even though the three strips are connected to three different data pins on the controller, WLED can still recognize this as one continuous string of lights like you'll see here on this animation. Now let's say you wanted the animation to go from the top strip and instead of then moving on to the beginning of the second, having it start at the end. You can do that by going into LED preferences and check the reversed option for our middle strip. Now you can see what that does to the same animation. I've had these now up for a couple weeks and I must admit I do love the change from the normal straight line diffuser channels I've really only used up until this point. The smooth rolling hills combined with the animations from WLED definitely adds a little bit of extra wow factor when watching. 
Now as far as hiding the wires, controller, and power supply, I'll probably just end up doing what I did in this video that I already made that you can check out if interested. So that about wraps things up, but since I always get a lot of comments asking about the type of animations and settings that I like to use, from here on out I'll just continue to play some of my favorites with the app open so you can see them in action. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you.